party. Uh, you can feel a change in the, uh, the atmosphere in our business. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, I love the talk that uh, we just had with Erwin. And, uh, and uh, I'm also a believer of, uh, I've got 10 minutes here today, and I'd like to give you an investment thesis and how you can see value and how I see value. And I'll give you in those 10 minutes the, the things I look for in actually investing. And the things that uh, I'll talk to you today about is the Lindero Gold Project. It's one of the world's only probably heap leach deposits, fully permitted, ready to go, uh, shovel ready. And the things I look when I do investment is I look for people and their experience, the resources. I look for the economics behind it. I look for sea level change. What makes it interesting at this time, at this moment, its relevant value in the market, and how I get a compelling thesis out of that. Okay, so in terms of management, in terms of people, what's very important, I mean, I have a history of being early in a cycle, looking at commodities that are on the upswing. In the case of, I've done three, one is uranium, early on in 2004, when uranium was $10, I took it, it went up to $140 when I sold a company called uh, Energy Metals for 1.2 billion. Uh, I saw the same type of uh, uh, parameters in the potash industry through a, a company called uh, Potash One when the price of potash was 300, it went to $1,100 and I, I sold it to a company called K Plus S. And uh, another thing I might add, in most of the deposits that I actually work on, they tend to become mines. Uh, this mine called the Legacy, uh, K plus S has now spent over $3 billion. And next year they're opening it up. Uh, so that's a, a testimony to my team in discovering and developing that project. Uh, and thirdly, the, probably the most recent one is in lithium. Uh, I worked in the, the lithium space, a company called Lithium One, uh, discovered a lithium deposit uh, in Ombre de Myrtle called Saldivita. Uh, I sold that one a company called Galaxy, and uh, that project now with Galaxy is worth over almost a quarter of a billion dollars. Um, on this project here, the other people are, are significant to me to develop a heap leach deposit is uh, David Keogh. Uh, he's got lots of experiences in Argentina. He uh, helped uh, the development of the Alambrera mine in Argentina, spent six years there. He put the uh, Amperi mine, a heap leach deposit to get, together. He worked with uh, Wheaton Silver on uh, looking at Los Filos. I have an excellent, uh, very engageable uh, CFO called Basam Mubarak, who uh, helped in the construction of uh, a gold mine in Panama. He also helped with uh, the sale of Penakia uh, copper to Inmet, and he also did a royalty to, uh, of Guacamoyo to, uh, uh, to a royalty company. So you need teams. So what is the sea level change that is happening that causes Lindero to be a, a very good investment uh, thesis? And that's Argentina. For the last three years, Argentina has been a persona non grata. I, I couldn't even get a, a meeting to talk about Argentina. And it's a country that is uh, very large. It's the eighth largest country in the world. And it's a big gold producer. And there's a lot of resource resources, it's a good place to work. It has a lot of tax advantages in, in, in terms of working there. There's a, a fiscal stability certificate you get when you have a feasibility study completed, which frees your taxes for 30 years. Um, it's got other incentives like uh, uh, accelerated depreciation of assets. So a number of good reasons why there are a lot of companies there. But for the last three or four years, it's been a terrible place because of the politics and the regressive economic policies. But then, in December, there was a new election, and there's a pro-mining president, uh, Mariko Macri, came in. And within the first 100 days, he had revitalized, I think, Argentina. He got rid of currency controls. He made import and export duty restrictions. He eliminated them. He gave, um, he resolved the debt issues with the debt holders in, in New York. And I think you'll see that in the next couple of years that Argentina will be the darling of South America. And there'll be a lot of flocking of, 
of groups back there. So let's talk about this deposit. So it's a heap leach, it's a hill uh, around 3,500 meters in a desert or with uh, the annual precipitation is like three millimeters. We've done extensive work in terms of metallurgy and drilling and we've outlined just to 500 uh, meters a uh, deposit that's over 1.6 million ounces of PNP at a grades that are in keeping of the average gold grade of a heap leach deposit. Okay, and let me emphasize, we have every permit that's required to start the project tomorrow. Okay, with the environmental permit, we have all the property permits to get the mining concessions, we have the water permits, we have energy for gas transportation, and all the construction permits. So it is ready. But one big thing about the work that my companies do is to, to de-risk, de-risk, and de-risk. So, so having, having known that there was going to be an election in December of 2015, I then engaged uh, a group, KCA, one of the world's best engineering firms for heat bleach, to get a feasibility study ready for this time for, in, uh, and this gold environment. So we just released our feasibility study two weeks ago, and this project is highly leveraged to gold. So if you look at the $1,200 Gold price, the pre-tax NPV, is like $218 million. We trade today at around $38, $39 million. Well, that's, that's U.S. We trade at uh, even lower than, uh, that's Canadian. So at U.S., it's uh, probably $30 million U.S. Okay, our after-tax NPV is $152 million. Our after-tax IR is 26%. And what's unique about this deposit, the... Um, uh, the highest grades are at the surface. We get, we get the most number of ounces in the first three years, so very amenable to debt. And the payback period at, uh, at $1,200 is two years. And you can see as you move toward the $1,300 and $1,400 uh, numbers that the, uh, the economics of this deposit are, are, are fantastic. Okay, this is a little, more, a little more granularity on the feasibility study. You know, we're talking about mining at 82 million uh, tons. The strip ratio is uh, one, almost one to one, okay? Uh, the total contained gold is 1.6 million, of which will produce 1.1 million ounces. This is a, not an insignificant amount of ounces to any mid-tier mid producer that's trying to replace their uh, production, okay? Uh, our peak production, and it's, which makes us also amenable to good debt, is... Uh, is in the second year, 138,000 ounces, and the life of mine is 12. Let me add, this is not being drilled at depth. It's a porphyry copper, porphyry system, and you know we've ended some of the holes in mineralization, um, so it's got upside in that respect. In terms of actual cap costs, what it costs to put this mine in production, you know it's not an 800, 900 billion dollar. Uh, Proposition, it's $151 million plus EVA. And there's nothing of any, most of the largest uh, costs are around the ore crushing and handling. And we have to um, um, narrow or to decrease the uh, commercial production time. We've purchased an HPGR, a crusher, for $7 million. It's in the country and it's ready to go. And it, it'll make uh, the actual construction period down to 14 months. Uh, in terms of our all-in sustaining operating costs at $1,200, it's $777, okay? Uh, we've spent over 22,000 hours doing basic engineering so that we could refine both the CAPEX and the OPEX numbers. And you can see that at $1,200, we have a margin of $443. At $1,250 today, you know, it, we've got almost $500 of of, re of uh, profits, okay? What, other, other, what else you want in a property is you want upside. So as I said, we had depth outside at, at, at uh, Lindero, and three kilometers away, as part of the same porphyry system, we have a deposit called the Arizero. And uh, I drilled in 2013, 10 holes. I, uh, I decided to do a, an I&I &I resource. We have about almost 500,000 ounces. We've only tested less than 15%. Of, of that project. One of our best holes was 48 meters from surface of 1.38 grams per ton. 
So I think there's definitely close to a million ounces that's probably in error zero that needs to be looked at. In terms of looking at our peer group, okay, uh, these are all companies that have uh, uh, proper feasibility stage properties. And if you look at any, any measure you look at, and I'm, I'm looking at the market cap versus the resources. If you look at general resources, M&I or I or reserves, PNP, M&I and M&I and I, we are undervalued by half. So the thesis is that we have a, a, a rising gold market, but those will be very attractive to a mid-tier producer where Argentina has changed and we are not getting discounted like we used to. And it's an opportunity for, for uh, us to not only look to merge, to be acquired, but also to build. So uh, our share structure is, is, we have really good uh, shareholders. We've got almost 40% of our companies owned by Orion Fund, a, a potential pro, uh, debt equity holder, Astrel, uh, a rich Argentine billionaire that takes an interest in gold, Waterton owns 11%, and Tocqueville. Management owns close to 20% and friends of, uh, of the company. So we've got $4 million in the bank, and uh, you know, we think our time has come. Thank you.